side plates for the upper can be made the normal way. Pin them together and then cut them together. But I've included an extra template for these plates. This extra template is a drilling guide. What you can do is put a pin through this plate, press it onto the inside surface of one of your side plates, and then drill a blind hole through here. First hole's drilled, you can take the template out. I've got my blind hole. Now I can flip it around and repeat the process for the other plate. Nice and precise. The trunnion of the Luger, you'll need to press fit a nut into the back of it so that the barrel can thread into it. And there's the finished trunnion. Start by gluing these two pieces to the left side of the upper. And the trigger is the same thickness as these pieces, which means the base of the trigger guard needs to be cut to clear that. Like that. Now this should be done with the saw that's specifically designed for cutting Luger trigger guards, but any kind of pull saw should do the job pretty easily. Put that pin in the right position. The only other part that goes in here is the rotor. Then we can fit the side plate and screw it into place. So unless you've glued the barrel on, then the barrel threads into the upper receiver. Tighten it down and then tighten down the front sight so you can manually align that front sight with the receiver. There's some detail of the front sight and the rest of the upper. Now we'll put the toggle link on either side. But the toggle links just screw together so that they move nice and smoothly. Put the screw post going through one side, so I'll attach that one first. The pin goes through the large slot, and the back sits on that pin. And same thing for the other side. For this one, we'll secure it up here. Those toggle links should move nice and smoothly, and they'll fall off easily. So the, up, the lower receiver will hold those in place. Next up, glue the frame pieces together. But make sure they align properly with the blueprint. Because it's easy to have these angles slightly off and then all the angles in the grip go wrong too. And you could make this piece out of two pieces of 6mm ply or you could make it from 19mm solid wood and then cut it in half. With these two pieces glued and these two, you'll need to line those up with the main blueprint in order to glue the other parts. To put the Luger together, we'll start with the upper frame and we'll put a pin in through here. And that will hold the toggle links in place. Just appreciate the construction of the lower frame before you put it together. Much like the real thing. Anyway, so first we put a compression spring into the trigger. So these little hooks need to go into those recesses. Just like that. And you can usually get your screwdriver into there. Push the plunger in the right spot. There we go. Drift a pin through there and we're good. To help stop that pin from damaging the other side of the receiver, if I get in real close, you can see I've rounded off that end so it doesn't punch through the hole and tear out any wood fibres. Very gentle, we'll get there one day. There we go. Sometimes it actually locks open when it's empty. 
the magazine base slides into the butt and it's held by two screws which also hold the grips in place check out that ASMR so each screw goes through a washer and that washer will help keep the grips in place if the grips are a bit loose and the top is flapping about in the breeze you can use double sided tape, hot glue, hide glue or even little hidden pins So I made this barrel 165 millimeters long. So I worked out that that was the perfect length for bias loaded size 19 rubber bands. So you just hook them onto the muzzle pin, I'm holding onto the upper frame rather than the lower, past the rotor, and around like that. This means one side is tensioned more than the other and that causes the rubber band to spin and increases its accuracy. If you wanted to use more typical size 16 rubber bands with that same bias loading technique, you could go with a 70 millimeter barrel. Like the real 45 Luger, I load this to seven shots. And click it back one last time. So, charge it just like a normal Luger, and it's ready to go. If you're real quick with your trigger finger, the toggle operates quite nicely. And the best part is the design of the sights. Pretty much a realistic sight picture. And it's hard to tell, but those rubber bands are landing exactly where the sights are. Oh, look at that. They even locked open on the last shot.